Okay, uh, welcome everybody. We're happy to have uh, Xing Tao Shen, who will tell us about recent progress of the volume of volume conjectures of links as well as three manifolds. Okay, thank you very much for invitation. Uh, okay, so now I will start. So today I would like to introduce you some uh, recent progress of the volume conjectures. So these volume conjectures, uh, basically I did a two uh, direction of the general, generalizations. So I will first uh, discuss the one with uh, Ken Yang. Uh, th this one, so we'll have a less like a Felix back background. So another one is uh, with uh, Kifeng Liu and uh, Xiang Mao Zhu. So it's uh, about the, it has a uh, relating with the uh, LMOB conjecture, Lafastida Marino Uguri Wafa conjecture. It also has some relation with the open group of theory. So it's, uh, I will put it later. Uh, okay. I will first uh, uh, discuss some basics of the, the talk. So the theme of my talk is the intertwining of mathematics and the physics. So mathematics uh, uh, is the volume conjectures for the Kernel Jones polynomial. This is the first discovered uh, volume conjecture. It was discovered by Kashif in 1997. Then the Labasiro Marino Uguri Wafa conjecture is also in the beginning of the uh, 21st century. So it's uh, inspired by some physics, transformal gauge theory and the string string theory and uh, like a topological string theory and the larger end duality. And this time uh, we discover some uh, new volume conjectures. These no volume conjectures, uh, especially for the volume conjectures uh, for the Rashitika Turayev and the Turayev Bureau invariants. Uh, this conjecture was discovered by me and the Tian Yang. And uh, we think this conjecture maybe have indicated some new physics uh, because this is a kind of new discovery in mathematics and it may discover in uh, indicated some new physics interpretation. So here are some uh, history and the basics about the knot theory, because this seminar is a representation theory. So I needed to introduce some basics in the in the knot theory. So knot is a simple closed curve, like in, embedded in R three, and uh, roughly speaking, a link is several copies. You have several copies of the the knots, several disconnected S one embedded in R three, and. Uh, so we will discuss uh, developing all the uh, definitions and the concepts about the knots. So the links are similar. The links are a little bit complicated, but it's similar. And uh, two mass uh, we are very, uh, for topologists, uh, people are very interested in distinguish the different different knots. And uh, so the two knots are equivalent if we can transform into another one by deformation. Upon uh, of R three upon itself, and uh, that means we can do all such kind of uh, like uh, moving, but you cannot cut the knot. You cannot cut the knot. So this is the, the only thing are not allowed. So we can go the to, do not involve the cutting or passing the string through itself. This is not allowed. Okay. So we have some basically we have several examples. Uh, this is the unknot. And this is trefoil. Trefoil is the simplest uh, uh, non-trivial knot, simplest non-trivial knot. And uh, uh, figure eight knot is the simplest hyperbolic knot. Uh, so Thurston has a very detailed discussion of this knot. And uh, he also introduced the, his famous tool of the ideal triangulation, the ideal triangulation. So previously it's called the only triangulation. But so William Thurston, he introduced the ideal triangulation. This is a very important tool for, for people studying hyperbolic geometry. And uh, this is the Hopf link, is the simplest link. So these three are knots because it has only one component. And this have two components, it's links. And uh, this one, the first one, the second one, truffle and a knot, they don't have the hyperbolic uh, structure. They don't have the hyperbolic structure. Only the figure eight knot, is the hyperbolic knot. It has the hyperbolic structure. And uh, so Thurston, uh, he argues, so we have, we can distinguish, we can classify all the knots into three types. So one is the, the torus knot, torus, torus knot. And the second is the satellite knot. And the third is the, the hyperbolic knots. So the torus knot and uh, the satellite knot, they don't have the, uh, hyperbolic volume. They don't have the hyperbolic structure. Only the hyperbolic knots has the hyperbolic structure. And you can find a single, uh, well-defined 
volume. It's called a hyperbolic volume. So that is an uh, invariant. Okay, so, so for the uh, hyperbolic knots, also it's like uh, it has the, we, in the nature, so we have the most numbers of the hyperbolic knots compared to the satellite and, uh, uh, and the torus knot. If we discuss, uh, if we fix the crossing to be n, and the letter n goes to infinity, so the numbers of uh, uh, torus knot and the, the quotient of the numbers of the torus knot and the numbers of the hyperbolic knot will goes to zero as n approaches infinity. So the in the nature, so the majority is the simple, is the hyperbolic knot. So the hyperbolic knot is uh, very important. Okay, so any method to distinguish different knots, we can introduce the knot invariant. And uh, the knot invariant is a quantity defined for each knot, which is the same for the equivalent knots. So then the people would like to, to search for finer and finer invariant. The, the, the ultimate goal is to distinguish all the knots. But of course, this is a kind of a, only a dream. But the people made a, a lot of solid progress towards this goal to find a finer and a finer invariance. So, so, and the research on, the, on those invariants is not, not only motivated by the basic problems distinguishing one from the other, and also understand some fundamental properties of knots and their relation to other branches of mathematics, like a chromophyton series, and the other like a, even have some uh, relation with the number theory. So have a lot of uh, uh, relations. And here, this is the, some uh, history. So I call it uh, the early development. So I call that all the development before the Edward Witten, we call it the early development. And after Edward Witten, we call it the modern development. So because Witten is a milestone there. So I don't send Witten, yeah, don't send Witten. So uh, 1928, Alexander polynomial is the uh, one variable polynomial. So actually uh, between 1928 and 1984, there's a, in 1974, in 1974, it's also the, it's also the, uh, have the Conway, have the Conway, have the Conway. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so in 1974, the Conway also redefined the Alexander polynomial, also redefined the Alexander polynomial using the scan relation. And the scan relation, so, but unfortunately, so Conway didn't uh, discover the Humphrey polynomial. His method can be used to define all those uh, three invariants in 1974. So then later it's called the, the Con Alexander Conway polynomial. So it's unfortunately in last year, so both Conway and Jones passed away. So I think this profile can be also dedicated to them. So this area is, uh, <clears throat> they made a <clears throat> tremendous contribution to this area. And then later, so after Jones discovered his polynomial, I think it's maybe in 1983, uh, I think, so one year later, one year before. So, and uh, Humphrey is a group uh, mostly from British. So it's uh, six people. They discovered uh, these two variable polynomials. And uh, PT is for the two, uh, Polish, I think Polish uh, mathematicians, they discovered it simultaneously. And uh, both, of, both of the two groups are uh, recognized <coughs> for, for their contribution. And in 1988 and 1990 uh, is the discovery of Kaufman polynomial. So first the one variable, then uh, two variables. So, so this is the, the early history. So about the, uh, the those not invariant. So Jones also make a breakthrough. So he had a big breaks. After Jones, a lot of things has been discovered. Has been discovered. So previously, so the knot theory, uh, the knots, people study the knots because the physicists are interested in that. So I think in the, uh, the end of uh, 19th century, I think the end of 19th century. So either, so it's a kind of, a, it's a wrong theory about the, about the physics. So the, so it's a kind of uh, like a light travels in the ether. So it's, this is proposed by the Kelvin. So Sir, Sir Kelvin, so he is a greater physicist, but he made some mistake in this uh, area. But it's, a, but it's, a, 
interestingly, very interestingly, so it's a, uh, uh, it's a make the not theory to be developed very fast because of the ether. But then later it's a find that the not theory could also relate to the quantum gravity. So after the uh, Witten, 1990, and it has a lot of applications. So this is the uh, scan relation. The scan relation, this is uh, discovered by the Conway, by the Conway. So there's two variable. This is the scan relation for the uh, Humphrey polynomial, for the Humphrey polynomial. You have the variable Q and T. So this is the scan relation. The scan relation is kind of a recursion formula. So you can each time apply the scan relation once. You can deduce, uh, decrease the crossing number by one. You can decrease the crossing number by one. Here, this is the L plus means uh, in a small neighborhood, this is a positive crossing. And the L minus means in a small neighborhood, it's a negative crossing. And L zero, that means it's a smooth in a small neighborhood, only, only in a small neighborhood. That means outside of this neighborhood, all the knots are identically the same. Only they are differ by, by this L plus L minus L zero in a small neighborhood. So that's each time you apply the scan relation, you can reduce the, the crossing number by one each time. And finally, you can deduce everything to the some disjoint union of the n knots. And then we have some initial condition of the n knot, n knots here. So then by those recursion formulas, you can calculate all those harmful polynomials. So I mean, you can calculate all those harmful polynomials. And for Kaufman polynomial, here is something else. It's not only the left and right smoothing, also have the upper and the downward smoothing. smoothing. So it's have like a four item, four item here for the Kaufman polynomial. And the Don's polynomial is a uh, special value, is, is a special case of the half polynomial. So you can take the t equals q squared, t equals q, t equals q squared, you will obtain the Don's polynomial. You reduce from two variable to one, one variable. And here is the history of the quantum invariance. I can um, uh, refer it to the modern development. So revolution always happens when physics physics enters into the picture. We call it the modern development. So in 1988, uh, um, Triev, he recognized the Humphrey PT polynomial as the invariance associates with the fundamental representation of the quantum group, UQSLN, and by setting T equals Q to the N. And uh, 1989, so Edward Lewitton, he interpreted the Jones polynomial by introducing the jones hamus gauge theory and predicted the existence of new invariants of knots and the links, as well as three manifolds at the roots of unity, Q1. So this is the, so I would, would like to emphasize this is Q1. This is Q1. So because uh, we will make the volume conjecture to Q2 or Q3 later. So that's why I want to emphasize this is Q1. So Q1 is the roots of unity, is the pi i e to the pi i over r. And in some physics literature, it's called e to the two pi over r because the notation is different. So we'll, I will also discuss, discuss this notation. There's a notation difference. Then uh, in 1999, uh, Rashitika Triumph, they used the representation theory of quantum groups. So not only construct the new invariance of knots and the links and the three metaphors predicted by Witten, at the root of unity Q1, but also at the root of unity of QS, they also give a definition, so not only at the Q1, and also at the QS, and S is uh, all the integers, all the integers. And then uh, the trial of Vero in 1992, they use the quantum 60 symbol to construct the invariance of three manifold at the roots of unity Q equals QS. And this R and S, uh, the, is their co-prime, co-prime. So this R is here, so it's the denominator. So E to the S pi I over R. So and S and R, they are co-prime. So this has a very tight connection with the, to the two plus one dimension of quantum gravity. So, and a Rashidink triumph invariant and the triumph viral invariant, they also have a very tight relation. So Rashidink triumph invariant, this is a complex valued invariant. If you take the, the modulus and then square, you will get the triumph bureau invariant. So I think this result is approved by Kevin Walker. Kevin Walker. So this is the result. 
Okay, then uh, the idea of the quantum groups was originated from the uh, quantum interval system. So this is some history. So we will quickly uh, review and uh, this is uh, some the early development of the quantum groups. I think uh, because you are all the uh, algebraist doing the representation theory, you are very familiar with the, uh, those stories. So this is developed by the Leningrad School. <clears throat> So this is something I can uh, move it a little bit quickly because it's a representation theory. So let the G be a finite dimensional complex semi-simple algebra and the UQG be the quantized universal enveloping algebra of G. So we can fix the G equals SLN. Mm, for each not component, we associate an irreducible representation of UQ SLN. And here is the R matrix. So R matrix is a solution of the Yabax equation. So this is a positive crossing, this is a negative crossing. So I only here I give a definition for the for the knot because for knot there's only one component so you can study from uh, v tensor v. So if uh, this is the link, you can uh, understand the v tensor w. So this is a r uh, check v w. So and this is i inverse v w. Uh, the quantum group invariants of the knot can be obtained uh, by the taking the quantum trace of the endomorphism obtained by those crossings of braiding. So you, like you have a, a a three-dimensional knot, you can take a light and project to the project them to the wall. And on the two-dimensional wall, it becomes a kind of crossings. You have a lot of crossings. Then you will have an endomorphism. And then we're taking by the what's the meaning of the quantum trace? The normal trace is A11 plus A22 plus A33. But the quantum trace is like you have a weight, like you have a Q to the 2n minus 1 times A11 and a plus Q to the 2n minus 3 times A22. So this is called a kind of, we call it the quantum trace. It's called a quantum trace. And, and also we have a lot of different kind of projection for the same knot. We need to prove that the invariant we defined is independent of choice of the pro, uh, projection. And uh, we, can, uh, you know, we can introduce some isomorphism. We can also resolve this difficulty. So anyway, finally, we can define a well-defined uh, quantum invariants, uh, a single variable, so in, in terms of Q. In terms of Q. Okay, so then this is also some basics about the representation theory. So this is a partition of of n. Uh, it's a Young table. Uh, so this is a, also the theory is about uh, the, the this basic theory is from the representation of the symmetrical group of S n. So the Young tables uh, were heavily used there. So this is the the sum of all the box. Uh, all the boxes. Uh, mu one is the number of the first row, uh, the number of the box of the first row, and mu two is the number of the box of the second row. So this is the number of all the boxes. All, all the boxes is equals to n, and uh, this modulus of mu is called the degree of mu, and the k is called the length of mu. Okay. So you how many rows? In the in public, you have, have how many rows? A partition can be represented by a represented by a Young diagram. So P is the set of all the Young diagrams and the chi A be the character of the irreducible representation of the symmetrical group is labeled by the partition A. So the both the character is labeled by a Young tableau, by a partition. And also the, the conjugacy class is also denoted by, by a partition, by a partition. And for example, this has a box, the first row is four. Uh, so mu one is four, mu two is three, mu three is also three, mu one, uh, mu four is one. And here you have totally, you have uh, 11 boxes. So the degree is um, 11. And then you have uh, a length is four. So you have four rows, four rows. Uh, and here you have uh, a Z mu is defined by the order. It's called the order of the conjugate class. It's the order of conjugate class. Because here is three, appear two times. So here we have three square, three square. And it, because it appears two times, so you have a two factorial here. So it's a totally is a, the order of the C mu, uh, Z mu, C mu is uh, 72. So this is a simple example. So now here is the example of the, uh, the quantum dimension, the example of quantum dimension. 
So irreducible representation of Euclid SLN can be identified with the Yang diagram, especially the fundamental representation is identified with a single box. This is the fundamental representation. And for the unknot, here is for any Yang diagram, and V is irreducible representation corresponding to this A. So now we put the knot is a very simple knot, just a knot. But the Yang tableau can be very wild. It's any Yang tableau. Uh, so this is WA unknot. This is for unknot. Q. So this is the invariant defined earlier. So it has a such kind of formula. So chi A C mu over Z mu. And uh, this is means if A is 11 boxes, so mu can be any shape of your tableau. And uh, the total number of the boxes is, is uh, the same number of A. Same number of A. This is Q to the N mu J. Here is minus Q to the negative N mu J. Uh, for you have such kind of expression. So this WA is called the quantum dimension of the corresponding representation space VA. And it's denoted by the dimension QVA. So this is, we call it the quantum dimension, the quantum dimension. And in fact, so for each Yang diagram A, so there exists a WA SL tilde KQT. So now we um, move from the one variable Q to the two variable, to the two variable. And at uh, such that, so at the, for SLN, for SLN, so T equals Q to the N should recover the invariant of SLN we defined earlier. This invariant we defined earlier. So this is the new invariant. And we call this SA, uh, WASL uh, QT is a two variable colored half uh, PT invariant. This is called the colored half PT invariant. So now we have two variable invariants. So here is a summary, here's a summary, here is a summary. So this is the direction of the categorification, categorification. This is the, like we have a house. This house is the first floor, the first floor. So this is fundamental representation and the UQSL2, we have the Jones polynomial. And for the fundamental representation and the UQSN, this is half-life PT polynomial. And for the fundamental representation, this is UQSON, one plus one. This BCD, all the BCD is here. So I should write all the BCD is here. So I'll give you Kaufman polynomial. And if you use any irre irreducible representation, you will have a color the Jones, color the Hoffman, color the Kaufman. Okay, so this is our first floor. And here is some bridge or secret tunnel to other branch of mathematics. So this is uh, the area in the uh, hyperbolic geometry. We have the original volume conjecture. It's proposed by Kashif. In 1997, and then Murakami, Hitoshi Murakami, and Jim Murakami in uh, 2001, 2001. And those LMU OB conjecture is uh, uh, is developed in the beginning of the 20th century in several physics papers. It's a uh, standard for Labastida, Marino, Uguri, and Wafa. And uh, those results is proved uh, by Kifong Liu and Pan Pan about uh, 12 years ago. About 12 years. And uh, this is a kind of the Kaufman. And the orthogonal LMOV conjecture, the orthogonal LMOV conjecture. So, but we propose uh, in my uh, thesis, PhD thesis with Ling Chen. This is uh, the orthogonal version of LMOV conjecture it's, uh, for the BCD theory. But uh, we only propose this conjecture rigorously, but uh, prove the several cases. We did not uh, completely prove this theory. It's uh, very difficult. So now I would like to go to the, uh, we first uh, uh, not to go to the, the Labastida Marino Uguri Wafa conjecture. So this is, we will be uh, delayed to the, the last half an hour. So now today I was granted for one hour and, a fifth and 30 minutes. So I will first uh, go to the volume conjecture and uh, to discuss one, one direction of the generalizations. We look at the, Okay, uh, this is the volume conjecture, the original volume conjecture. So actually this is not the original volume conjecture. The original, the original volume conjecture is uh, uh, proposed by his invariant. It's called the Kashif invariant. So this conjecture actually is uh, reformulated by the uh, Hitoshi Murakami and the Jim Murakami in 2001. 
Uh, so they use the Karadzhuk Jones polynomial. So previously, Kashyap used the Kashyap invariant. And then this form is a little bit different from the, the, the forms in some literature. In some literature, he has n, and he has also the same n. And here, my n is means the n plus one dimensional. It means the n boxes. We have n Yang tableau boxes. You have a row of the boxes. So I will first give a definition of Jn. So what is Jn? Ah, it's here. So this definition is quite complicated. Actually, JN, you have a lot of method to, to, to calculate it, and it has a lot of different uh, definitions. But this is the, from the uh, tableau point of view. So the tableau, you have an N tableau. You have N, yeah, N boxes. So N boxes, so each fundamental representation is two-dimensional. So the symmetric power, N's symmetric power of the two-dimensional representation, this is N plus one dimensional. So you have N boxes, uh, one row of Yang tableau. So then you have N plus one. So you have N plus one dimension, okay? You notice the N plus one dimensions. This N, the capital N means the, the number of the Yang, uh, the Yang tableau, the boxes of, in the Yang tableau. And this definition is here is some sure polynomial. This uh, is uh, the linking number, the linking number. And here is also the linking number. And uh, finally, you set uh, t equals q square. So finally, you set uh, t equals q square. So this is Jn is defined in this way. Defined in this. So now you don't have q and a t, you only have a q, only have a q. And uh, this n means n plus one dimension. So now we can look at the of the volume conjecture. So the left-hand side volume conjecture tells you, so the current Jones polynomial at this root of unity will become exponentially large. It will become exponentially large. And the growth rate is just the volume. It's proportional to the volume. Times two pi is the volume. So this conjecture, so it's very hard to prove. So until now, the general case, even for the existence, exist, exist, existence of the limits haven't been proved. So I mean, for general or not, for general or not, not K. So the existence of the limits on the left-hand side is not being proved, haven't been proved. But a, several cases has been proved for some simple, some simple knots, simple, simple, uh, simple cases. So this conjecture, why this conjecture is important? It connects very, Two very profound areas: the quantum invariance founded by Jones, Witten, and Rashid Triev, and then the modern hyperbolic geometry founded by Thurston. It's connecting two different areas. The right-hand side is the uh, hyperbolic volume of the knot complement in S3. The K is a, a, a hyperbolic knot. K is a hyperbolic knot. So actually, so later, so the Murakami, Murakami, they also generalize to any knot. So if this is do not have hyperbolic job, uh, structure. So this is, you can understand as a simplicial volume. So it's the web you give you zero. So the right-hand side will be zero. If uh, this is a, it's a for a non-hyperbolic knot. But the people are still still interested in the hyperbolic case. The people are st still interested in hyperbolic. Uh, okay, so this is the, the right-hand side, this is S3 minus K. That means it's not a complement. So this S3 minus K, this is a cuspid hyperbolic manifold. Cuspid manifold. Cuspid manifold that means you push the cusp to the infinity, to the infinity, to the infinity in the sense of the hyperbolic geometry. It will have a hyperbolic structure and has a volume. Has a volume. Okay. So for many years, the only proven case is the figure eight knot Bowman. So this is first discovered by Alcohol. So he's a professor in Sweden, uh, mathematician in Sweden. And uh, later, the full asymptotics is by the uh, <coughs> Danish, Danish mathematician, so Jorgen Anderson and Hansen. <coughs> they obtained the full asymptotics of the figure knot. And for other hyperbolic knots, the people even don't know the existence of the limit. 
And then recently, so I mean, it's about three or four years ago. So the full asymptotics of the three twist knot 52 was approved by uh, Professor Ozuki uh, from Kyoto University. <clears throat> and uh, is by using a very powerful analysis method to deal with this conjecture. So finally, so you can see the Bangalore conjecture also uh, solved by using some analysis method. And here, some cases of the volume conjecture is also solved by some analysis method. So, so we can see the power of the analysis method in, the, in, in this area. So we'll see in the next page. So by a careful analysis of a combination of the Poisson summation formula and the center point method, Otsuki proved not only the volume term of the case 52, but also a full asymptotic expansion for the case. His method is uh, also uh, successful applied to prove the case, so six crossings, seven crossings, and some case of uh, eight crossings. So it's quite a pity, and uh, Professor Takata, she also passed away, I think, uh, recently. She also passed away recently. It's quite a pity. <clears throat> So uh, here, by a uh, careful analysis of a combination of the Poisson summation formula and also the saddle point method. So this is, there are two methods, the main method. So the Poisson summation formula is you change the, uh, the sigma sum to the integration, to the integration. You can change, enable you to change the sigma sum, the lattice sum to the integration. And the saddle point method enable you to find the the, the leading term, the leading term, the saddle point method. Or you can say the, the stationary phase method, stationary phase method. Uh, they will give you the, the leading, this will give you the leading term. Okay. And for some physics understanding, so ex explanation of the original volume conjecture can be, uh, is given by the Sergei Gukov in 2003. And also, later by uh, Witten in the paper, Analytical Continuation of Chen Samu's Theory. Okay, so this is some Felix interpretation of this, uh, of, the volume conject of the volume conjecture. Any questions? Okay. <clears throat> so now we will study the the asymptotics of quantum invariance of three manifold. So previously, it's the volume of conjecture about the knots and the links. So it also can be generalized to links, but I only discussed the knots. So now we would like to discuss the uh, volume conjecture of the residual triumph invariance and the triumph bureau invariance. This is the, those new uh, new uh, volume conjectures we discussed. Uh, oh, it's not that new. It's uh, almost uh, six years ago in 2015, so already six years. <clears throat> okay, so this is the volume conjecture for RT invariant at Q2. So we are to remind you that the definition for QS, this is the root of unity. So you can think the root of unity is very sensitive in the representation theory. It's also very sensitive for us to making the, the volume conjecture. It's a really sensitive, you, you will see that later. So under the quantum notation, we use this notation. So Q to the N minus Q to the negative N over Q minus Q inverse. We use this notation. So while for the physicist in some physics paper, they use this notation. And so in our notation is Q1. This root of unity is our Q1 in, under our notations, okay? So in physicist paper, in physicist paper, they use this root of unity. But actually this is Q1 under our notations, okay? So our Q2 will be e to the four pi i over r. So e, e to the two pi, r, two pi i over r in the physics paper is the Q1 in our paper. And then, so in our paper Q2, that means Q e to the four pi i over r in physics paper. Okay, so then the Rochettin triumph uh, not only rigorously defined the RT invariant of three-dimensional uh, closed manifold, the orientable closed manifold evaluated, evaluated at Q1 
predicted by Witten, but also extended to the Q order, also Q, Q, Q order, like Q3, Q5. So uh, Blanche, Habegger, Masbom, Vogel, so they are the French school, French school. They again, so just like, uh, like two or three years later, uh, they extended them to Q4K plus two. They extended the Russian trial for work to Q4K plus two. So like you have Q2, Q6, Q10. So, but we propose our volume congestion for Q2 at Q2. So Q order later. So we also have a congestion for Q order, for Q3, Q5. Okay, so this is the volume congestion, three-dimensional closed orientable manifolds. So I developed this, uh, this volume congestion with uh, Tian Yang. So now he is an assistant professor at uh, Texas a and TAMU uh, -A in Texas College Station. <clears throat> Uh, for any three-dimensional hyperbolic closed man orientable manifold, M, and the letter volume complex M. So this means the complex volume. The complex volume denotes the volume M plus I CS M. CS is a Chen-Simons invariant, the integration of the Chen-Simons form over the three-dimensional manifold. And we have uh, the following. So the logarithm of RT R M at Q2, at Q2 over R minus two. So you can also over R, so that is enough. So R minus two, we just like to have a have some fixed meaning or has a beautiful graph. So to make R minus two, you can, you can write it as R, it's the same. Because uh, in the representation theory, the R is the level plus rank. So R minus two means the level, the representation level. So there's a level rank duality. In the, in the representation theory for quantum invariance. So the, for SU2, for SU2 is uh, the level and also have a rank. So, so for SU2, two is the rank. So R is the rank plus level. And then, so minus this rank is level. So R minus two is the level. And the limit to R is odd. So R goes to infinity. R, goes to infinity. R should be odd because R and S should be co-prime. So when S take the, the two, you take the S value for two, S equals two, then R should be odd. So R and S should be uh, co-prime. And then you have such kind of a volume potential. So because why here I have a module, so that means for the Chen Samus term, it has an ambiguity, for the, only for the Chen Samus term. So that means if we have taken the absolute value here, uh, not the absolute value, only take the real part, the volume, so the volume, then here you can take the absolute value. And take it here, you take a logarithm. Then you get rid of the transamus term, and then you get rid of the ambiguity for the transamus term. So this is our <clears throat> the volume conjecture we proposed in uh, 2015. So then during that time, so we computed a lot of examples. So later, some examples are proved. So now we look at some the computations in the early years uh, we made. So MP denotes the P surgery. It means the Dehan surgery of the knot K in the S3. And the Rashidic triumph invariance RTR is given by the following identity. So this identity looks like a monster, but it's uh, still quite easy to understand. So this part is kind of a, a quantum dimension. So quantum integer is uh, like a Q to the uh, N plus one, minus Q to the negative N plus one. So it's something like the quantum integer. It's just like this one, just like this. The numerator of this one. And so this is some faces, some faces. And this JN is our older friend. It's the current Jones polynomial. It's the current Jones polynomial, but it's uh, evaluated at Q2, at Q2, instead of Q1. And this is also some faces. <coughs> before the sum. And here's the sum from n equals zero to r minus two. And they go from n equals zero to r minus two. Okay, so this is the, the expression for the uh, Rashidic triangle invariant. And this P is the like a surgery, is the P surgery. We can consider the rational surgery. We can also consider the integer surgery. So it's some something the hyperbolic geometry, the people would like to do the surgery. So take off the tubular neighborhood, 
of some knot and then twist and then glue back to the to that uh, complement. Then you can obtain a closed manifold. You can obtain a closed orientable closed manifold. So in order to verify the volume conjecture, it is equivalent to calculate the following limit of the following quantity. So we take the we, we can make a fancy name for it. It's called, called a, like something like a, the, the quantum volume, the quantum volume. So this two pi log uh, RT Q2. So at the at, 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 at R and the quotient with the RT at R minus two, R minus two. So we consider this to test the, the volume conjecture. We calculated this quantity to to verify uh, to to calculate the examples. So this is the MP. So here's a, some very concrete example. So MP is hyperbolic when the absolute value of T is greater than four. So when K is the big gate knot, the simplest knot, and P equals six. For example, P equals six. We have the following uh, identity according to the snipe snap pipe. Amplify is this is the programming so for the hyperbolic geometer. So I think 80% of the hyperbolic geometer, then especially for the new generation, they know how to use this uh, this program. Yeah. So this is a uh, this is a very powerful uh, program. The, you can calculate the volume and the uh, transformers invariant as 1.28449 and here is 1.34092. So this is the volume and this is transamos invariant. The post topological invariant. <clears throat> so we have the following table of QRM6. So this is QRM6 is a, we calculated this term, okay? Calculate this, this term by using this expression. So when R is a 51, it's a 101, 151, 201, and 301, and 501. So we can calculate until 1.28448, and here is plus 1.3948. You can see here it's very close to the to the, to the value computed by SNAP. So that's why we get to formulate, to, to propose our conjecture. So we believe this should be true. And later, it's actually this true. It's proved by Professor uh, Otsuki. Again, by using his method, the, the Poisson summation formula and the side point method, okay? By the combination of the, the Poisson summation formula and the set point method, he proved that the result for all such kind of p was all such kind of p. When k is the figure eight knot, so Professor also he proved that this one, and not only proved this one, he also proved the, the full asymptotic expansion. Uh, also with Takata, so he obtained the secondary term is the randomized torsion. Randomized torsion is another very important uh, geometry. A geometric uh, like invariant, right? The method torsion. So this is the, for the Q order. So Q order, we also have a, a conjecture, but this is a, we don't expand it. So it's a very similar to the Q Q Q two. So this is the volume conjecture for the triple view invariant. So this is actually is our origin point from discovering the all these volume conjectures. The triv zero invariance. We first discovered the volume conjecture in the for the triv zero invariance, then for the rotating triv invariance. So you can see in the archive. So first, our name is called the volume conjecture for a family of the triv zero invariance. Later, we change our name because we also discovered the, uh, the volume conjecture for rotating triv. So triv invariance was originally defined for the closed three manifolds. And it became a TKFT for three manifold with now empty bounded boundary. Here we just do a small modification. We use the Thurston's ideal triangulation instead of, in, instead of the usual triangulation in the construction. Then we obtain a real valued number instead of a TKFT for three manifold with non empty bounded. So previously, if you don't make this modification, you will obtain only a TKFT. So when you consider the uh, the 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 manifold with boundary, you will not get a number. You will get some vector, vector space because you only have a TKFT. So, so this is the this modification is very important. And uh, here the volume conjecture so three manifold with the 
uh, boundary is a, uh, we proposed our conjecture here. So for any hyperbolic three-minute force, so M with cusps or with totally geodesic boundary, totally geodesic boundary. So this is a, uh, some manifold. So are very interested by the hyperbolic geometry. And for R running over all the, all the integers, we have such kind of expression. Because triumph zero invariant is just a real invariance. So you don't have the, here you don't have the such ensemble term. And of course, this is a cusp of the manifold. For with cusps, you don't have a ensemble term. And uh, so you only have a hyperbolic uh, volume, only have a hyperbolic. And here we take the logarithm. So this is the, the volume conjecture for the triumph zero invariance. And here is also R goes to, uh, is all the integers. So R is all the integers, running over all the, all the integers. And the two and R should be co-prime, should be co-prime. So this is our volume conjecture for triumph zero invariant. So this we discovered in the, like February, so just six years from now, in the February of 2015. Then for a Schlick triumph, we discovered in like March, the beginning of the March of 2015, the one month later. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, so now I would like to say a few words about the those new volume conjectures about the triumph zero invariance compared to the uh, invariance discovered by Kashif and uh, uh, Hitoshi Murakami and Jun Murakami. So, what's their difference? Uh, here, so first, uh, how many uh, tetrahedra has been used in those cases? So this is a table. So I copied uh, this table from some papers in the uh, in the hyperbolic geometry, in the hyperbolic, uh, hyperbolic geometry. So the tetrahedra used the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So S three minus hyperbolic knots and the links. So this is, is the, you have ideal triangulation. So like uh, for the figure knot, it's located here. You can see here, it's here. For figure knot, the complement of a figure knot, you just use two volume. You have two uh, tetrahedra. You will have two tetrahedra. Uh, it can be decomposed to two tetrahedra. So it's a, so you can see my PDF hand. So it's located here for the figure eight knot. And the three twist knot, three twist knot is five two knot. Five two knot is located here. It uses like a three tetrahedron. It's located here. And, uh, and it's also located here and there. So because this is, a, this, the, this row is completely, completely included in, the, in, the, in this row. Because all the hyperbolic knots and the links complement, they are orientable cusp of the manifold. So the figure eight knot is also here. It happens here. And this is why you have two numbers. One is a figure eight knot. Another one is some like kind of, uh, it's a sister, it's a sister. We call it a sister. And this is a five two knot. One five two knot is located here. Five two knot is located here. And some uh, 12 crossing knot is also located here. Twelve crossing knot. So you can so you, so you can see the original volume conjecture only proposed for this row, for this row, for this row, and our volume conjecture is for almost all the uh, manifold with hyperbolic structure. It also proposed for those uh, situations for orientable and non-orientable. Non-orientable here is a very famous manifold here. It's called the Gisecki manifold. It's called a, a, a Jaisekin manifold. It's a German mathematician. In the beginning of the 20th century, he's discovered his manifold. It's a, you can attach all the tetrahedra. You have a tetrahedra, and then you attach all the, uh, uh, all the face, uh, I think all the face to, to two, to one faces or to two faces. I forget the details. Anyway, so it's only only use the first only use the one tetrahedra only use one tetrahedra, and this volume is the half of the figure knot. It's just the V three. 
is just the V3, the quotient of the of the simplicial volume and the hyperbolic volume. So this is just the V3. So 1.0145, something like 1.0145. It's just half of the volume of the hyperbolic noise. Okay, so this, uh, the original volume conjecture was mainly proposed for the complements of the hyperbolic noise in S3. And our volume conjecture for triumph zero type invariance was proposed for all the cusped manifolds and also three manifolds with totally geodesic boundary. In here, a lot of uh, case situation, nobody to calculate how many numbers of the, those totally geodesic boundary. It's also a huge number here. So actually, so our volume conjecture is proposed for all such kind of situations. So most of which are not the knots and links complements. So you can see only 300 cases in these 12,000 cases, they are the knot and the links complements. So other cases, they are not the link and the knot complements. So you can see, so this kind of table uh, so tells you the hyperbolic knots have the most, it's the majority in all the, all the knots. And then, it compared to the those orientable cusped manifold and the non orientable cusped manifold. It became again, it's like the rational number compared to the irrational number. So, those are the huge numbers. So, that's why the previous volume conjecture only considered for those uh, cases and our volume conjecture for all those cases. So if you have a so, so can I interrupt you for one second? So, I, I don't think I understand. So, the try of your own variant for your um, not complements. So, the not complement is a, it's a manifold boundary, and try of your classically assigns a vector space to this. Um, I, yeah. Yes. And so, is it possible to see the number you get by doing this ideal triangulation from the vector space? Yeah, I will uh, give you how to define the, okay. the, Okay. So the original invariance will give you vector space, but then we have a modified volume uh, triumph real invariance. We use the ideal triangulation. Then you will have a number. You will get a number. So you will see this example later. Yeah. So that's why the original uh, volume conjecture only for this row, and then we can consider all such kind of cases. So most of them are not the not not the links complements. And for example, so figure eight knot is a hyperbolic knot whose complement in S3 consists of two tetrahedra. And the five two knot consists of three tetrahedra. So one is located here, another one is located here. Okay. So now we look at some example. So the N11, N11 is the D second manifold. So D second manifold is located in this table, uh, in here, at here, in this table, at here, in this table. So it's a non orientable cusp of the three manifold. It's non rentable. This is the non rentable case. So, which consists of only one tetrahedron. So, now we can, so the uh, it's, uh, expression is very simple. So, just a, 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 a. So, this is the quantum 60 symbol. It's uh, introduced by Krilov and Rashitikan in 2000, uh, in 1988, I think. It's in 1988, almost 33 years ago. So, and this is a, uh, is a number from in the trifle bureau invariant. So trifle, the building blocks of the trifle bureau invariant is the quantum 60 symbol, is the quantum 60 symbol. So this is a TDR N11, and then you have the sum of all the all those numbers. And A, 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 this is a quantum 60 symbol. The definition is quite complicated. I do not expand it here. So you just think it's a, it's a, it's a monster, but in this case, it's quite cute. It's a cute monster. We put a cute monster here. So, and AR is all the admissible uh, set. So, A should be in the admissible set. That means uh, for the, also in the physics languages, they call the spin form. They call the spin networks, kind of the spin form of spin networks. So, that means uh, it's a hyper triangle rules for the triangle rules. For tetrahedra, you associated to a lens, each lens with a number. Then the for triangles, so two lengths, the sum of the two lengths should be greater than or equal to another length. So we have some triangle rules. And all the sum should be smaller than r minus two. So that's why 3a should be smaller than or equal to r minus two for each triangle. So this is some admissible conditions. So this is in physics, we also call the Levin one model. So Levin one, Levin one model. 
so in physics, and also spin networks. So it's also had very tight connection. Five wheel inverter has very tight connection to the physics. Here, so for each order integer, r is greater than or equal to three. So we can have this kind of. We also have a name of quantum volume. So, so this is the five zero m two pi i over r. So log two pi i r minus two. So I want to return to the previous one. Uh, your question. So this is the integer we obtain. We will not obtain the vector space. It's a pure number. So that's why we can propose the, the volume convention. <clears throat> so we have a definition in our uh, uh, in our paper. <clears throat> Sorry. So this this guy thinking um, manifold. This is a manifold with boundary. This is a cusp manifold. Okay. The boundary, uh, you, uh, you you push the boundary to the infinity. Uh, okay. You push the boundary. So if you have a boundary, but there's a boundary at the infinity. Okay. It's, it's called a cusp manifold. So this is why it's a source thing is so famous. He make a tremendous contribution to this uh, like ideal triangulation to the hyperbolic geometry. So the ideal triangulation is the one of the most important idea concepts in the modern modern hyperbolic geometry. Okay. So you can study those dihedral angle. The dihedral angle is a pi over three. Also for uh, for for uh, some cases. So uh, for the figure knot, it's a pi over three. In this case, I think it's also pi over three. It's also pi over three. It's a dihedral angle. So you then can uh, go from dihedral angle. You can calculate the volume. You can calculate the volume by using the Robachev function. By using the Robachev function. So Lobachevsky, he is the founder of the hyperbolic geometry. Okay. Uh, okay, here, so then you have the, the volume. So we have calculated the Snappy and the Regina, so another program. So that's a manifold. This is the V3, is the V3. Uh, V3 is the quotient, it's the quotient of the, uh, it's the quotient of the simple volume. And the hyperbolic volume, it's this way. So you can see here, this is approach uh, this volume, approach this one. So you may wonder why this approach is a little bit slow compared to the Rashidian triangle environment. Because in the Rashidian triangle environment, we consider the quotient. Here, we didn't consider the quotient. If you, you uh, I use the quotient here, it also will approach very quickly, approach this number very quickly. Okay, so recently, so to my surprise, some people doing the a French group, they doing the quantum computation. They also ca calculated this uh, triple variable invariant. They they argue that so those triple variable invariant is very important in the quantum algorithm. And I discovered a new paper. So just recently, about I, I mean, two or three months ago, in the end of the December, I think, some people put the end paper on the archive. And they study our those volume conjecture for more cases. So I haven't updated my slides. So I should update it a little bit. So some French group, they they uh, compute more than like a 17, maybe 17 or 20 examples. So by using those uh, by our 12 view, they test also our 12 view event, uh, volume conjecture. So why we call this uh, uh, such quantum volume? So because uh, this quantum volume is not in, inside our paper, so but in, in, in my talk, so because I think this name is a, a very fancy name, so so we witness very drastic uh, huge cancellations for the fit and not complements. Some amounts of the triple zero invariants even reach ten to the hundred, while the final triple zero invariant is just around ten to the one hundred forty, for r equals one thousand one, one thousand one. This is a very unique phenomenon. This unique phenomenon doesn't happen in the original volume conjecture. Origi original volume conjecture is something like uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, like a small monster. They add, add them together to a middle sized monster. And our volume conjecture is like uh, you have uh, a lot of huge monster and they just fight against each other. Then a lot of monsters, they died. But then after a huge cancellation, a middle-sized monster is remained. 
this is for volume congestion. So this is a very unique phenomenon. And this unique phenomenon needs an interpretation. And then, so in my recent paper with Jim Murakami, so we discovered this kind of uh, interpretation for, for this phenomenon. So I will discuss later today. So in a, in a contrast, uh, so, so not only we discovered the new volume congestion for all the closed manifold and the cast manifold, but also the, the behavior, the asymptotic behavior is quite different compared to the original volume congestion. So in contrast, so the convergence behavior of the Curtis Jones polynomial in original volume congestion of figure not is quite simple, which is just a summation of positive numbers. So anyway, the original volume congestion for the 5-2 is more complicated. So, but it still does not involve that dramatic considerations. So the 5-2 the, the knot is, is finished. This case was proved by Professor Otsuki. He think this problem for more than 10 years. It's a very hard proof. It's about uh, almost 100 pages. And uh, Professor Otsuki, he also used this method, proof 5-2, to prove our case for the Rashidic life invariant for the closed case. He, he also used like 100 pages to prove uh, one of our cases. So we will discuss later. I have a question. Yeah. Do you think, is, is it possible that your conjecture implies the original volume conjecture or are they like really different things? Uh, they have some relations, but are not uh, imply each other. So we have, a, uh, we have seen this uh, very deeply. Uh, they have some, in some cases, we have some relations. It will, uh, it can prove from one from uh, one side of the other side, but not uh, in for the general case, it's not. Yeah, thank you for your question. Thank you. This question is very intrinsic. <clears throat> okay, so, so that's it's rather easy to prove the figure is not the case for original volume conjecture, which only involves some simple estimations. So, but for our uh, example, you need to prove the figure eight knot. You need to play some tricks because it has a huge cancellation. So this is also we have the volume condition for at the Q order. So I also skip this part. It's similar to Q2. Okay, so this is the recent development. So this is, I write this uh, uh, about uh, Two years ago, so now it has the list is very long, so I didn't. Uh, I, I follow all the development, but I I didn't update the, these slides, so I should have updated it. Because I have uh, some teaching load this semester, so I don't have a teacher assistant, so I. I said the teaching load is quite strong. Uh, Otsuki uh, refined our volume conjecture of Rashidic triumph invariance at Q two. To full asymptotic expansion. Felix flavor conjecture by uh Min Romo and Yamazaki. So this is some guy in the in the IPMU. So uh, formally. So they also uh, first refine our volume conjecture to Q2 at the Q2 to the full asymptotic, full asymptotic expansion. So we have only first term is the volume term. And then they proved the case of the closed hyperbolic three manifold obtained by the integral surgery. Around the figure eight knot for one in S. So this is also his work. So he proved the, the closed hyperbolic three manifold obtained by the integral surgery around the figure eight knot. He proved all the because surgery we have P surgery. P can be five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten. So all the P. So also he proved all the P's. So he is the first guy who proved a series examples, infinite series examples. And then Otsuki Takata, and they recognize the secondary term in the asymptotic expansion of the RT invariant as the right method torsion for the above example. So actually, so Witten also has a conjecture. It's called the Witten's asymptotic, asymptotic expansion conjecture. And in Witten's asymptotic expansion conjecture, it considered the case of at Q1. So at Q1, the right method torsion is the leading term. Now in Q2, the right method torsion became the secondary term because the volume term is the leading term okay, at the Q2. Because uh, uh, in, in Witten's asymptotic expansion formula, so conjecture, so it is uh, only 
polynomial growth. It's not exponential growth. In this condition, it's exponentially growth. And the Dietrichary, Kauf, Jiang, Yang, they proved the volume conjecture for the uh, trivial environment of complements of form. Uh, figure it out. This is figure it out. So we, I would like to say it's modified. It's a modified trivial environment because it's for the cusp of the manifold and the total geodesic boundary manifold. And the polynomial ring in S3 by establishing a relation involving the trivial environments of the linking component complements in S3 and the certain sum of the colored Jones polynomials of delta link. So twelve viral invariant can be also can be expressed as a sum of the current Jones polynomial. The sum of current Jones polynomial. Okay, so and then that is Sherry Kafajani, they are the first established relation between the asymptotics of the modified twelve viral invariants at Q2 and the Gromov norm of the three manifolds. And they obtained a lower bound for the Gromov norm of any compact oriented three manifold with empty or total toroidal boundary. And uh, so, so in a meeting, so Professor Kafajani told me that when he posted this paper on the archive, uh, so Professor uh, Clifford Tops so wrote her an email to congratulations her on this result. For this result, they find a lower bound of the group of norm of any compact oriented three manifold. It seems it's quite a kind of uh, important uh, result. So that's why Thomas can send her email to congratulate her. But I'm not an expert on, uh, on, on this part, so I cannot judge. <clears throat> they, they also uh, proved the, uh, our conjecture for the group of norm zero links complements. And then in, in the third paper of a Dietrichary and Kauf Janis, they first related the Anderson Mastbaum Ueno conjecture. So this conjecture is in some sense of the dynamical system. So to the growth of the trive real invariance of hyperbolic three uh, at Q2. So they related uh, this conjecture to our conjecture. And they proved that if our conjecture, volume conjecture is true, then it can imply the AMU conjecture. Can imply the AMU conjecture. So this is the relation to the dynamical system. So this area is, uh, I'm also not uh, familiar with. I needed to study more. Then I can say more words on this one. And they also answer an integra integrality conjecture of Chen Yang conjecture, of our conjecture uh, for the uh, trive viral invariance of the top torus things. And then we conjecture in the most cases of torus things, the trive viral invariance should be integers, should be integers, except for some special cases. So this is called the integrality conjecture. And they proved this conjecture. Did, did you conjecture that because of experimental evidence or do you have some conceptual reason? And we also proved the several cases for the for the torus links, for torus links. But this is a minor conjecture, so I do not uh, include it in in the talks. It's uh, not related with the volume conjecture. It's a minor yeah. conjecture, so you can uh, look at my paper, so you can uh, obtain that. I mean, from a categorification and, point of view, if it's you have if you have these integral structures, then you might expect categorification. So you know that's it's kind of interesting that you. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for the comments. So I also discussed some categorification. So in my other work, so I, I if we if still have time, so I will discuss today. And the Belletti, Datichery, Kafajani, Yang, they also proved the fundamental shadow link. So this is a, a, another special case. It's at a V8, it's not a V3. V3, the volume of V3 is 1 1.0145. V8 is 3.66. It's like you have a tetrahedra, so all the dihedral angle is zero instead of pi over three. It's a dihedral angle is all the zero. So it's called kind of a, uh, the volume is a, is the fundamental shadow link. It's the connected sum of such kind of V8. And uh, this is a, it's a group at the, this is a group, uh, Detecher and Kafajani is a group at a, at a Michigan State University. So Kafajani is a professor there and the Detecher was a, her post, uh, her postdoc during that time. I mean, four years ago. Belletti, that is Kafajani Yang. again proved uh, this uh, uh, fundamental shadow link. Belletti uh, is a student of Constantino in in France, I think. Constantino and uh, Wang Kaho and uh, and uh, Ong Kuang. So this is all. So this is a professor at uh, CUHK and the Chinese University of Hong Kong. 
they obtained the asymptotic expansion formula for the prior real variance uh, invariant at Q2 for the figure eight knot. They obtained the whole asymptotic expansion. And then this is the, my recent work with the uh, Jim Murakami. Uh, so we proved that the primary, okay, uh, we have a, a primary uh, and secondary terms of the asymptotic expansion of a creed of Rashidic quantum 60 symbol. So are dominated by the volume and the grand matrix of a single tetrahedron, respectively for majority cases. Then we also propose the conjecture for a symmetrical property of asymptotic for the of the quantum 60 symbol at Q2. So we first prove the first term, the leading term and the secondary term as the volume and the grand matrix. Then we propose the conjecture of symmetrical property. This symmetrical property can explain the huge cancellation. I pointed out earlier, so the huge cancellation here. So, so the drastic and huge cancellation here. They can explain here. So the reason we discovered in, in my paper with the uh, uh, Murakami. So we propose the conjecture for symmetrical property of the asymptotics of the quantum CC symbol. Because the huge cancellation happened for the prior viral invariant, actually is the symmetrical on a deeper level. It's a, it's a symmetrical property of the asymptotics of the quantum 60 symbol. Because the quantum 60 symbol is the building blocks of the prior viral environment. So that means so on a representation theory should have some very deep in, impact in, in such kind of phenomena. And the highly non trivial cases has been uh, are checked. And this conjecture also explains the very mysterious speed cancellation that we compute at the Q2, drive your invariance at the Q2. And this conjecture may uncover an extraordinary hidden nature of the quantum 60 symbol. This kind of uh, uh, hidden nature has have never been discovered before the, for the quantum 60 symbol. And then Zheng Han Wang, he is a professor at uh, UC Santa Barbara and uh, also a professor at uh, Microsoft Q Station. He's a student of uh, Michael Friedman. So he, rela he related uh, the anion system, uh, 3D quantum gravity to our volume potential for closed hyperbolic three manifold. And he pointed out that it is puzzling how the non-unitarity arises from the unitary 3D quantum gravity. So he thinks this is uh, quite uh, mysterious. And also, so- Sorry, can I, can I say, what, what does that mean? What non-unitarity? Non-unitarity because now the quantum integer will become negative. So you can see here. Oh. So, so you, you see this one is something sign. Sign something here. So it's mm -hmm. n over r. So in normal case, n should be smaller than r. If n is greater than r, this sign value will take the value to the third quarter. Mm -hmm. Third quarter, not the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, the sign value is positive. Mm -hmm. But on the quadrant, it will be negative. I see. You will have a cancellation because the sign value uh, the, in the drive zero invariant is that this is a two i plus one. It's just on the border of the second quadrant and the third quadrant. Mm -hmm. So you have a huge cancellation there. So this is also a core of my paper with the tumor coming recently. I see. Thanks. So the five plus one. So the five plus one will be negative number. So that's why it's, uh, it will be not unitary. And also, Rishiteng also pointed out in a paper. So uh, the conformal field theory corresponding to the quantum 60 symbol evaluated, evaluated at the non-conventional root of unity at Q2 is non-unitary. So this is in the paper, they confirm the non-unitarity. So if uh, there is a physics theory corresponding to this Q2, there should be a non-unitary theory. And this is the volume conjecture for the quantum 60 symbol. So this is just a set of setups. So this is like the admissible, I will quickly I did, because you are, you are the experts of the representation theory. I can let you show them so how is the visible and this is the definition of the quantum 60 symbol. I quickly move it. So here, this is the conjecture. And then uh, we prove this conjecture. So this is a, uh, the tetrahedron in the hyperbolic Euclidean spherical space, uh, space with a huge angle. And then they satisfy, satisfy this result. And then it was ordered. So each single tetrahedron will also go to volume Q2. There's a result. 
by the Woodward. Woodward has a conjecture. He's a professor at Rutgers. At Q1, so it will go to zero. Also polynomial growth. And it's related to the spherical, I think a spherical tetrahedron, also hyperbolic tetrahedron, but with the cosine. So there's a, it will not be exponentially large. Only at Q2, it will become exponentially large and it goes to volume, go to hyperbolic volume. And if Euclidean and spherical, it will be zero. So this is a conjecture proposed by me. And, uh, and this is for normal vertex, ideal vertex, ideal vertex. This is some terminology for the hyperbolic geometry. I would like to uh, skip it. So it's very tedious. And we, we obtain this theorem. We obtain this theorem. So let the T be a hyperbolic tetrahedron. This is the image paper with Murakami, uh, Q Murakami. So with one vertex ideal or arch ideal. With one vertex ideal or arch ideal, we have such kind of expansion. And this is given by the uh, gram matrix, given by the gram matrix. And here, quantum 60 symbol evaluated at Q1 after certain evaluation can be also be related to the hyperbolic volume of a tetrahedron, which was a systematically studied by the Constantino. But uh, in, in this case, in the, in, you need to have some certain evaluation. You have some manipulation. It will also relate to the hyperbolic. OK, so now this is a summary. This is a summary. So we will refer to the categorification a little bit earlier, uh, back to, to the categorification later. So this is the summary. So this is a machine to life environment for close three orientable three manifold. This is for the three manifold with boundary. And this is a quantum 60 symbol. And here is a Q1 and a Q2. So Q1, for the current Jones polynomial, Q1 and Q2, they both have the volume conjectures. But for those three manifold, three invariants, three manifold invariants, you have something kind of three dimensional flavor. Then the Q and the Q2, they have a huge difference. You have a huge difference. At the Q1, so Rashidin triumph at the Q1, this is actually is the weighted Rashidin triumph invariance. This is asymptotic expansion conjecture, which asserts the arch invariant polynomial growth in terms of R. But at the Q2, we have the volume conjecture. It's not only polynomial growth, it's exponentially growth, and the growth rate is proportional to the volume, to the hyperbolic volume. And here is similar. So for the triumph zero invariance with boundary, so this no volume conjectures should be something similar to the uh, here. But uh, for, for the Q2, at the Q2, is to have volume conjectures proposed uh, by me and uh, Tanya. And here the same. So for Q1, the worldwide asymptotic expansion conjecture also asserts that the polynomial grows in terms of R. And then if it's at, at Q2, it will be exponentially large and proportional to the volume. It is proposed by the me and Murakami and it will prove the majority of the cases. Uh, at least the one is ideal and the uh, ideal vertex or ultra ideal. Okay, so the formally uh, the Rashidin triumph invariant evaluated the rules of unity other than Q1 was considered to be related to Q1 via certain Galois transformation and thus not a significant, not a significant at all. So now the huge difference between the rules Q1 and Q2 has been revealed. So previously, so my advisor told me, so he at, at the uh, uh, 20th century, so in 1990s, so he asked several people, so is there anything interesting for the Q2, Q3? And uh, all the people told him it's uh, exactly the same as Q1. But now the huge difference uh, between Q1 and Q2 has been revealed. Okay. So uh, then, um, so we look at the, say a few words about this part. So we hope this volume conjecture for a string type and a type real type invariance of three manifold may uncover a certain new geometric and physics, physical interpretation other than the usual SU to Samos gauge theory. And a quantum integer, so this one, so at Q2, for Q2. So the quantum integer can be negative, so it can be possible during the computation. So unlike the original Wittgenstein Samos theory, so this indicates a non-unitary fixed theory, so which seems quite wild at this moment, but it is confirmed by many top mathematical physicists, such as uh, my advisor at the ETH, so Giovanni Felder, Renat, Hachif, Nikola Rachitik, and Edward Witten. So they all confirmed uh, this case. 
So and uh, here is a uh, so there's a lot of non-unitary theories. So but none of them have any experimental support at this moment. Not have a mathematical significance. Our discovery for the regime trifle trifle zero invariance probably is the first time that a mathematics of potential non-unitary fixed theory looks so extraordinary. So previously we have the Wittenstein Hamel theory is here is fixed. And it goes to mathematics is polynomial growth Rashidin type invariance. This is called asymptotic expansion conjecture. Now we find that the, at Q2 is our new volume conjectures. It became exponentially growth. And then we wonder whether it can give a, a new non unitary fixed theory. So this is still a blank uh, area. So I wonder if some physics, physicists can discover some new theories here. Uh, in addition to the witness transformal squeezes. And then, so here are some, some of my wild uh, <laughs> dreams. So this is a wild dream. So like in the 19th century, the people's the fix is go from linear to nonlinear. In the 20th century, the people's go from like the Heisenberg uh, matrix, it go from the Heisenberg algebra, go from commutative to non commutative. Now maybe the 21st century, so we should go from the unitary to nonlinear. So this may be, so shed some new light on the black hole information paradox. So now so this has some development recently in the, in the physics. So the people, many people argue that it may be required a non-unitary theory. It also related to quantum gravity. I don't know whether it has some relations. If it can be discovered, it will be, a, it will be, that will be great. <clears throat> okay, so then this is, thank you for the last part. So then I will go back to the, another generalization. I will quickly move in speaking in like five minutes or seven minutes to finish another generalization. So this is uh, the part for the only one direction of the generalizations. A any questions? So then I move to the another direction. So, so this is a huge talk. It's like for one hour and maybe 45 minutes. So this is, uh, previously we have studied this one. So the color the Humphrey and the color Kaufman. So now we studied the, what is the LM OV conjecture. This can inspire us to generalize another direction of the volume conjecture. It's LM OV conjecture. So the hidden relation between the quantum invariance and the LM OV conjectures. So this is uh, the original LM OV conjecture is about the uh, color the Humphrey PT invariance. And uh, you know, the classical Humphrey PT polynomial so you have a very nice properties. So this is for the fundamental representation. V is for fundamental representation. The quantum invariance is just the, the classical half life polynomial. So for a, like a for coefficient for this identity. The Z here, Z means that you have the integrality. And the Z squared, this means you have the symmetry, means the symmetry for the, for the invariant. For this invariant. And then z to the one minus l is some polar structure. You have polar structure. You have the integrality and you have a symmetry and you have the polar structure. This is for the classical uh, Humphrey polynomial. So this is for classical. When the v is the fundamental representation, if we change the fundamental representation to any irreducible representation, then to the other irreducible representation, then this the nice property disappear. So it just became the coefficient is QT coefficient. And this do not have any good properties. So here you have the integrality, symmetrical property. You have the polar, and here you have nothing. So you have no obvious integrality, no obvious symmetry, no obvious polar structure for, the, for any arbitrary irreducible representation. And to reveal this hidden integrality, hidden symmetry, and a hidden polar structure for color kind of the half like PT polynomials, uh, half like PT invariants, we require the deep ideas from physics again. So this ideas is that we call it the ideas from the LMOB condition. So come from a series of work done by four physicists, Namastida, Marino, Ogo, and Wolf. And uh, this is uh, also the idea is from the large N duality. Is the idea is from Koft. He is also Nobel laureate in, in, in physics. He have the idea from 1974, imitated back to 1974. So during that, that time, we don't have the transformal gauge theory. We don't have the op open topological string theory. So that means, so, so the Hofta can be see, he can see the, so it's those direction 
in a very early stage. So he is a true master. So Kafka is a, is a very smart guy. He is a true master. Uh, the history of the original large antibody, uh, 1992, Witten, he said, uh, the transamos gauge survey on S3 is equivalent to the open topological string survey on a deformed coniform, his uh, S3. And uh, 1998, for Bakuma Wafa argued that the uh, open topological string survey on the deformed coniform is equivalent to the closed topological string survey on the resolved coniform. This, this here requires some knowledge in the algebraic geometry. So it's, it's Calabio uh, three manifolds. And then you can make a, because they are equivalent, so you can make a, uh, you can make a conclusion. It is a conclusion from the first point and the second point. So the transformer gauge theory on S3 is equivalent to the closed topological string theory on X S3. And here you can, you can prove this result is computed by Fabro and by the Harapanda. So by some localization techniques. Confirm the input thousand. So if we want to probe the LMOV conjecture, then we need heavy machinery. So this is the some summary of the uh, ideas. So this left hand side is the transformal gauge theory. Right hand side is the Gromov Witten theory. So you can see this is the bridge. So here is the bridge. And uh, the underlined is the physics work. And the second work, because it's more solid, it's the mathematical work. work. I use the signal, signal work. It's, uh, so the Hofter is the idea of the duality of the large n limits of the UN gauge theory and the string theory. And the Transamos in 1974, so they obtained a transgressed form. And the Jones, he had a Jones polynomial in 1983. Then Witten have Transamos interpretation of Jones polynomial. This is the left-hand side. And here is the topological closed string theory captured the most information of the string theory, but rather easy to compute. So that's why we use the topological string theory. And the global Witten invariance of Calabi-L threefold give a mathematical rigorous formulation for the topological closed string partition, partition function. So that's why the global Witten theory invariance is important. Uh, it is the, uh, it's the partition function of the closed topological string theory. theory. And here is the, the result here. So it's this part, this part. Is here the bridge here. The combination of Witten 1992 and the global 4 of is just almost of S3 is equivalent to the topological closed string on the resolved conifer. And here is the Rashidic triumph, is the mathematical theory. And here is the cut deal. It defines the open group of invariance of resolved conifer with the Lagrange super metaphor determined by the unknown. And this is in the global Fritten side. And then Google Wafa, they think they go from the closed to open. So this is closed, this bridge is closed bridge. This is open correspondence, it's open. The open is very difficult. So transamos partition function of a link in S3, so involve color the half fly invariant is equivalent to the topological open string partition function on resolved calling for the XS3 with the Lagrangian sub-manifold corresponding to the link. So here is closed, here is open. And the open, uh, man, open string uh, partition function with the Lagrangian sub-manifold corresponding to the link this is like a large sample manifold. It's very difficult to, to, to construct. So actually, I heard that the Clifford Tops, he wrote like 30 pages to, to construct a very complicated example just for the link Hopf link. So even for the Hopf link, it will be very complicated for the like large sample manifold. But the reason today they have some development uh, I didn't follow in this direction because I now I follow the volume conjecture more, more often. So previously, I followed this, this part. And here is the conjecture by Lavasina Marino Wafa in 2001. The total topo open topological string free energy has an integer coefficient of expansion. Then through, this is a conjecture. This is also a conjecture. Then you through, you interpret this conjecture to this part. And this part, it became not a conjecture anymore. It became a theorem. It's proved by Kifong Liu and Pan Pan. Uh, it's called the LMOV conjecture. So Professor Kifong Liu, he gave a name to the LMOV. He put the name here, Lavasida Marino Wafa, and he has Uguri Wafa. He put the name LMOV, so give a name. So he interpreted the conjecture through this bridge to the to this part. You can see this part is a very all, all everything is rigorously defined and it can be rigorously proved. But this part is group of written side is very complicated. So even I think the open group of written some definition is not complete. Not complete. And then the free 
an energy of the synthesis partition function of a link in S3 has an integer coefficient expansion. So now we can look at the synthesis uh, partition function. This is a, a two variable colored half life polynomial. This is the true of function. So I think this is very familiar with the uh, representation series. Uh, like here. So this is uh, the sure polynomial, and this is run over all the partition set. This A is a Yang you know, over all the partition. And then using a plastic uh, exponential method, uh, we can write the free energy like this. So you can see the K and the A is all the information here. Now is encoded to the information given by FA. So FA have all the information for the for those uh, for those uh, not k or not k, and then here you can see uh, this expansion. So now the information passed to the to F A. Then F A have an expansion. Uh, you have F A have an expansion, and this M A B is also only related with the Yang tablo A and B are Yang tablos. So chi A C mu, chi B C mu over Z mu. So this have a Yang tablo, and then this P B you have a uh, expansion FA in terms of uh, MAB. MAB is kind of uh, the new basis, and then this PB is a quantum coefficient. So this now you obtain everything. You have the border structure. You have the hidden integrality, hidden symmetry, hidden border structure. You have everything. So uh, with the help of the LMOV conjecture, so now it's called the LMOV theorem. You obtain the all such kind of nice property: integrality, symmetry, and the border structure. So now you can see that the colored half line is also very nice uh, invariant, just like the like the half line the half line invariant. So then we study the congruence relation. From the congruence relation, we know the volume conjecture on other directions. Previously, we changed the root of unity for the three manifold quantum invariants. Now we change the quantum group. We also can change the quantum group FCU two to SUN. So, but we need a kind of knowledge of the congruence span relation. This is inspired by the LMOV conjecture, by the LMOV conjecture. So we have two directions. One direction is change the uh, the root of unity. Another direction we change the quantum groups. So not similar to the classical half life polynomials. The current half life invariants have never been discovered to satisfy any scan relation since the discovery of the quantum invariants. Somehow it is always a dream for the mathematician to simplify the calculation after some breakthrough discovery of a new theory. So anyway, searching certain scan relation is one among those dreams. So along the way, we studied the MOV type of conjecture for framed for the half life invariance. For non-framed, it has been proved. But for framed, we haven't been proved yet. But we cannot prove the framed conjecture, but we can discover some interesting case. We discover some cases indicates the existence of certain congruence scan relations. This is the start point from which we obtain a lot of results, conjectures, as well as some very interesting phenomena. And this also we find that this program is also a huge program. Discuss discover a lot of interesting phenomena even for the categorification. So here's the definition. So frame the color the half like PT invariant for not K is uh, defined by this one. So we need to change a little bit. This is a non-framed invariance. We need to change it to the framed invariance. Framed invariance, this is a very normal uh, like a change from the non-framed to framed. So this is some couple numbers. So I think this is a very familiar for the representation <laughs> <laughs> series. WK is the, the risk number. And this is the uh, with L components is similar. So we just define it for nodes, but the L components is similar. There is also a framed version MOV conjecture for framed colored half life PT invariance, which seems more deep and harder to prove. But we still obtain a lot of nice properties by studying the framed colored half life PT invariance. So here is the definition. Reformulated framed colored half life uh, PT invariant for not K. So it's given by uh, this one. It's given by this one. So so we have a reformulated version and also framed. So we have a sigma sum here. And it's a run over all the possible boxes. We have that. The number of boxes of A and mu are the same. And then this mu is uh, given by Q to the N minus Q to the negative N. So this is called the, the, the mu. So those are young. 
John Tablos. Okay. And then the definition of a link with L components is similar. So we just have some the, the products here. This is for only for nodes. So then you with this new definition for the reformulated the current half like PT polynomial. So we have a theorem. So for this one, is a it's just have the uh, symmetry and the inequality. And then we introduce the notation for the link colored by the same P, partition P. So this means a, a row of boxes, P boxes, a row of P boxes. So this is the P, 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 P. So you have uh, L components, each is by P. So then we have the original volume, original uh, scan relation can be reformulated like this one. Because our def definition is a little bit uh, different. So now the, it has split with two from one to two. So previously is just the one here and here is nothing here and one square here. Because why? Here we have an additional term here. Even for the one boxes, the sigma sum disappear. Here is a one, here still have a one. So that's why it's a split with nothing here and the one square here. So this is for the crossing in one component, this is crossing in the multiple components. They are equal sign. Because this is just our classical scalation. This is our classical scalation in our new notations. But now this we have the congruent scalations in this notation, in this notation. This notation, you have the congruent scalation here and here is the equal sign became the modulus, became the modulo. It's not equal anymore, it's modulo. And this is type one, this is type two. Type one crossing and type two crossing. So this is our congruent scalation. So this mean, means A modulo, a equals B modulo C. That means A minus B over C is in this integer ring. Is in this. So this is our congruence scan relation. So this is also the first time discovered the scan relation, any type of scan relation for the colored half line invariance, for the colored half line invariance. So you can see here is P equals one just to here. P equals one just to go back to here. So we cannot prove this conjecture. Then we prove tested a lot of cases. We, we prove this triple. So this is torus not, torus not, torus link. The torus link, the torus link, the torus not. So this type one, this type two. And some four one, figure eight, and a not, and a T2 negative two. T2 negative two is the Hopf link. And those torus link knots with a larger prime number P. So the P should be a, a, a prime number. So previously, the example, this is P should be a prime number, any prime number. So we test the P is seven, 11, so we test a very large number. So this is what we prove for all the case. For such kind of case, case we prove for all the case. And this is for negative link, the positive tink, the negative tink, then this is a kind of a triple. So we only prove the several cases. And now we go, go to the colored zones. We have those congruence relation and it inspires us to also obtain some Congruence relations for the color Jones. We can prove this or not. This is a congruence relation for the Jones color Jones polynomial. This is a congruence relation for the color Jones polynomial. The shape is a little bit, a little bit different. But the idea is that it has some similarity. Sorry. So this is saying that the color Jones polynomial at a root of unit. Uh, yes. Sorry. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see that you can recover it from a smaller rank. Sorry for a sm yeah. smaller color. Right. Rank. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So this is a theorem. It's a. It's a easy. It's kind of you cannot see as a theorem. It's kind of a corollary. You can use Habitos result to easily prove this. To easily prove this. And then Le also have some result here. Le, uh, Le. So yeah, he also has some result in two thousand. Okay. So. At a certain root of unity. So, so now we look at the volume conjecture. We have discussed the volume conjecture. We, we want to see what's the difference, what's the relation between the volume conjecture and the color uh, the Jones. And then now we change to SUN. Okay, now we change to SUN. SUN is defined also in similar, in similar is in this way. So we go from the covariable to one variable. So it's similar to the color the Jones. Colored the, the SUN can be defined in this. And then we also have this conjecture, but we cannot prove this conjecture. We cannot prove this conjecture. 
So this congestion is for SUN. Is for SUN. SUN. So for this result, uh, we can we have some. Uh, also, we have some result for four one, and uh, not for n is greater than three. For some result, for some special case, we can have uh, uh, some zero. And the corollary. So this is a uh, if the above conjecture holds. And the set of roots, this, this is, uh, you can prove this one. This one, it seems this is a correlate of the lot. So for for some knots, so this is the correlate of the, our conjecture. So it is a, partly it's proved, I think it's proved by lot, but I'm uh, not very um, sure about this. So, so either entirely or partly. So you has such kind of result. Also has good argument. Uh, then we needed to have a, then now we need to modify the Habros conjecture. We need to modify the Habros conjecture. The Habros conjecture uh, theorem is Habros theorem, sorry. So this Habros proved for SU2 is a C theorem. Then we propose a conjecture is SUM. SUM is the conjecture. So this is called the, uh, cyclotomic expansion in cyclotomic expansion for the Curry Jones polynomial. This is zero. So that means you can, uh, by the recursion, recursively, recursively, you can determine all those H1, H2, H3 until Hn, until Hn. So for J1, you can determine H1. From J2, H1, you can determine H2. So they are all the integer coefficient to ring, integer coefficient to ring. This is a very powerful result. This is a very powerful result. You can see here's a gap. Here's a gap. Here's a gap. And then we propose the uh, similar conjecture for SUN, but the gap is larger. So here is a plus two. Here's a plus N. So the gap became larger. And then you can find where is the root of unity located for the volume conjecture? It's just at this gap. Okay. So that's why you can see here. So the volume pressure is here. Is n and n plus one. It's just located in the cup. So here is a. It's just located in this cup. In this cup. And here the cup is n and n plus n. So it inspires to to uh, to propose the volume pressure for the SUN volume pressure. So this is a volume conjecture which holds for any hyperbolic knots and for the n plus one to n minus one. So you have all such kind of volume conjecture. Everything in the gap is okay. So because now the gap is larger, so it's a go from n, n plus small n. So big n plus small n. So all the a is between one and n minus one. You have a volume conjecture. And we can prove the volume conjecture, volume conjecture is true for the figure two knot. So solving the gap equation, so you can see the gap equation, we can call the formula to this. So this is our volume conjecture for the credit SUN. And uh, we also have the uh, cyclotomic expansion for the super polynomial. So we discussed something in the super polynomial. So you have a TNS4 when you have such kind of expansion, then we can, discuss, uh, we can have such kind of conjecture for the cyclotomic expansion for the super polynomial. We need to have an alpha k here. We need to have an alpha k. So for each knot, there exists the alpha k. So alpha k is determined by p1. So the super polynomial is like the father, is like the parents of the uh, horn of Rosansky and the knot floor homology. Now the existence of the super polynomial has been proved, I think. Just recently, after 2018, it has been proved by several groups of people. And uh, this conjecture, so when it's true for n equals one, then alpha k is uniquely determined. So when alpha k is fixed for n equals one, the alpha k is, if n equals one, the conjecture is true, then alpha k will be uniquely determined. Then alpha k is fixed, then for you test p2, p3, p4. You have such kind of, you have also have some gap here. This is cyclotomic expansion for the, uh, for the super polynomial. 
And then we, we can also prove that the above conjecture is true for the torus knots, torus knots, TMN. This is homologically thick knot and with n equals one. So we have alpha TMN equals negative n minus one times n minus one over two. So this is my theorem. And then, so this is also closely related to the smooth football genus. Those uh, smooth football genus. The smooth football genus is the minimum genus of a surface smoothly embedded in the football uh, before with boundary knot. In particular, a knot K in S3 is called a smoothly slice if G4 K is zero. And the invariant alpha K, alpha TMN, this is course knot, is like this, suggests so a very close relationship between the above theorem and the following Milner conjecture, which was first proved by Krohammer and Wolfka. So the smooth forward genus of torus knot is m minus one times n minus one over two. Uh, then it's proved by Rasmussen. Rasmussen. So Rasmussen introduced the knot invariant SK from the horn of homology, which is the lower bound for the smooth forward genus for knots in the following sense. So for any knot k in S3, so we have the absolute value of SK smaller than or equal to two G S K. But G4, G4 k. Uh, in addition, Rasmus again proved the Mueller conjecture by purely complete polyol method. Based on all the knots we tested, we proposed the following conjecture. So my invariant alpha k, uh, determined by the cyclotomic expansion conjecture for n equals one, is the lower bound for the smooth forward genus. It's also lower bound for smooth forward genus. So for the, all the knots we tested up to 10 crossings, it is identical to the uh, Rasmussen's S invariant and also as the double's tau invariant. So these two invariants are the very important invariant in the uh, categorification. Those S and the S invariant tau invariant are in general not the same, right? Not the same, yes. Yeah. But the crossings they are the same. Okay, I right, see. So. Hayden, I think he gave a, a example, so up to like 15 crossings or something like that. They have a counter example. Russell Wilson has a conjecture to they are it's the same, but then Hayden, I think he gave a counter example to that. Yeah, but I think there's also. Yes. Some guy in my some guy who used to be in my department, he wrote the, it was a head in an ordering, I think, produced the uh, counterexample. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this alpha invariant, my alpha invariant, I think it's the limit of SN invariant. The Rasmussen's S invariant is for SU2. For SUN, there are also SN invariant. So I I my feeling is that my alpha k invariant is the stable limit of SN, I think. Probably. So again, by solving the gap equations, so two variables this time. So this I described in my paper on the archive. So in the hyperotype cyclotomic expansion, we could formulate volume congestion. So we the hold for any hyperbolic dot complement CS3. So when this one is not the not a positive integer, n minus one minus b over two is not a positive integer. So we will have the volume congestion. So I want to give like uh, several remarks. If B equals N equals N minus one. If B equals N minus one, then T just equals negative one. T equals negative one, this is decategorified. This decategorified is the original volume conjecture. So the by conjecture just became the original volume conjecture. Because this is B is N minus one, N minus one, then T equals negative Q N plus N minus one. This is also N plus N minus one. So this is just became negative one. So this is the original volume condition. If n equals two, then b is chosen from one corresponding to the n original case. And the two, three, four, five, six, seven. So b can be, because this is non-negative, uh, non-positive, n minus one minus b over two is non-positive. Then b can be one, two, three, four, five. So even for n equals two, b have a lot of choices. A lot of roots of unity can be chosen. And here is a, in a joint work with uh, Jorgen Anderson. So we fix t to get a so-called refined volume conjectures. This is the, the project under, under working. And the above conjecture is true for the figure eight node. So this conjecture is true for the figure eight node. Okay, so I think uh, I just uh, stop here, so. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. That was a very nice, it was a lot of information. Le very long <laughs> talk. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for invitation. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, I mean, a lot of people were around the beginning part than they had to teach. Um, uh, 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 I think only Wang Kun is left. I don't know if you, if you have any questions. I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, 
so getting back to um, maybe like, <laughs> like half an hour, 45 minutes ago. So this non-unitarity mm -hmm. business. Um, ah. so, first, so first I have a question. So, like, so the Taraya Vero invariant, I guess for, for Q2 is no, longer, is no longer positive necessarily, right? Uh, Taraya Vero invariant is a, uh, I mean, Taraya Vero invariant can be uh, positive, negative. Each, each term, each integral. But the important thing, why is uh, people thinking this is a uh, non-unitary? Because of this term. Yeah. Bracket two i plus one will be negative. It's possible to be negative. This is yeah. that uh, it will become uh, non-unitary. Okay, so the, the so yes, the point is that the tri of zero invariant for Q two could be negative, possibly, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you then this uh this old theorem of Walker that the tri of zero invariant is the norm squared of Rashtik and Triev, this is no longer true then, I guess. Uh, because the Rashtik and Triev invariant, there's no Rashtik and Triev for the, uh, for, for the, for the cusp of the manifold. You, oh, I see. So it doesn't make sense to ask that question. I see. Uh, another question is because, so I've been thinking about these uh, kind of this non semi simple TQFTs that like Nathan Gear and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Patron and Costantino were working on. So I, I think you have similar issues there where, um, you probably have some non-unitary stuff. And also they have a volume conjecture, which I'm not familiar with. Is there a connection between their non-semi-simple volume conjecture and kind of your Q2 volume conjecture? Uh, yeah, I, I think their volume conjecture is uh, something here. So uh, most of people that have the volume conjecture is like this part. It's still for the knots and the links. It's not for the three manifold. Mm. It's still in this in this column. And That's they, true. And deviate the, the root of unity to be a little bit away from the original root of unity. Yeah. So, and both here. So, and our voltage is for the three manifold. It's a more like a three dimensional flavor. I see. It's in this, in this part. So it's Q2 and this part. I see. So the original classical thing, it doesn't matter if it's Q1 or Q2. Or Q2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So their model, most of volume conjecture, the generalization of the volume conjecture, they, they, they find a different root of unity. It's like if they fixed some rates of uh, S and R, mm -hmm. so such kind of generalization. And then my generalization here is that uh, we change the, the dots and links to the three dimensional manifold. Another direction we change to the different uh, quantum groups. I see. And okay, do you, and so, okay, so then do you, do you think there's a relationship between the tri of Vero invariant for Q of two and their kind of modified tri of Vero invariant for non semi simple representations? Uh, for the kind of the Jones polynomials they have uh, discovered here. So, Chen Yang and his group, they have, uh, they already use some such kind of some TKFT method to prove uh -huh. uh -huh. the tri of Vero invariants. And a certain sum of the kind of those polynomials. They, they express the triumph of below as the sum of the absolute value of the Jones polynomial with some face. So you can see here, the Rashidinger triumph invariant is here. This is Rashidinger triumph invariant. Rashidinger triumph invariant is the sigma sum of the kind of Jones. And then it's absolute value square. You will get the triumph below. Uh, right. but Five zero invariant of Casper manifold is just the sigma sum of some absolute value, the sum of the absolute value. I see. Of the absolute value square, I think. Sum of the absolute value square. Okay. Instead, of, like here is the the drive zero for the for the closed is like the uh, the square, the modulus square of the sigma sum. That's right. I remember that now. For the Casper is the for Casper manifold, the Tian Yang and his collaborator, Dr. Chiru and Kao Fujiani, they obtained the formula of the sigma sum of the modulus square. Okay. Instead of a modulus square of the sigma sum. Right. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me stop the recording. Um, I don't know. Uh, okay.